Yes. Robert L. Dean, I am excited today because we got another good, good interview right here for the people yes, today. You know, I, I start talking about health and clear yes. skin and everything yes. like that. Because this next, this next person you're going to interview, he he, he looked like he got this cocoa butter skin. This you know, cat, this cat is swaggy. You know, it's, I mean, he's so swaggalicious that yes. I'm like sitting up there like, okay, you know, he he really making me feel a certain way that I'm gonna have to work it out. I'm gonna call up, up uh, your game. Yeah, I'm like up my game. I'm like, say, I'm gonna talk to my wife and say, babe, now, now you see swaggalicious over here. You know, I need to go swaggalicious more. You feel right. what I'm saying? <laughs> you know. Yeah. So who do we got with us today? We got this singer. He has been in the music industry for a little bit right now, and this dude, um, everything you see about him is like. Swag, this dude is sharp, and all that good stuff. It's none other than Mr. Micah Lee. Good morning, my brother. Good morning. <laughs> you guys got me cackling already. Man, welcome to the Wake Up Morning yes, Show. Yes, so uh, glad to have you. We're going to start right off. We're going to start off right there. Where do you get this swagalicious style from, man? You know what? I really don't know. It's just one of those things. Um, well, I can tell you. First, first thing, I'm six six. Yep. Right. And I'm a, a a ball player first, so you know I'm a big old man, and um, I work out a lot. So for me, I'm always um, well, well with getting stylists for different things and events. Uh -huh. um, used to be kind of difficult, you uh -huh. know, because I was never just the off the rack kind of person right. because of that. Right. So, and I got a size a 17 shoe. So I had to figure it out. So, um, man, I, stop bragging. Stop bragging. No, no. I didn't mean it like that. I'm just saying, like, I had to figure it out. So, right. figure out what I was going to do. Right. You know, I, so I became really good at understanding my own self and, you know, what I look like and who I am. Mm -hmm. And I think that could even go spiritual with that. You right. know, like I, I had to really become into the knowledge of who I am and nobody can dress me better than me. So, amen, amen. Uh, you know, once I got to that space of understanding who I am, this is just the product of what it is, I guess. I guess. But oh, you know what? Man. That's smart because um, I talk to people often um, being a promoter and um, having been a manager and all that good stuff. And you have a lot of people who wear things in gospel and outside of gospel that should not wear what they wear. My mom always said, just because it comes in your size does <laughs> not mean that you should wear it. Come on. Well, you're talking right. I'm going to keep my mouth shut because I need all these friends in my house. <laughs> so, so let me ask you this question. Okay, you're a ball player. You said 6'6", six, six, so I'm looking at you. I want to assume that it was football, but what what sport did you play? Um, I went. Uh, played uh, football. I went to UM, Miami. Okay, okay. Wow, that's a big that's a big program. Yeah, yeah. Now, did you go all the way to the pros or, or, or did you stop in college? Um, no, I didn't go to the pros because I got hurt. I actually was in uh, a major. It wasn't even with football. I was in a major car accident coming home, and it really changed the uh, trajectory of my life. I remember that night like it was yesterday. I was in a major accident. My SUV hit the uh, median head on, oh, Jesus. and then I slid down into a canal. Mm. And I remember the uh, water just went to rising. Jesus. Um, it rolled up to my nose, and I remember... I'm thinking like this was the end of my life. And I remember calling my mother. I said, Mom, I've been in an accident. At first she was freaking out. And um, I said, I've been in this accident. I don't think I'm going to make it. But just know I love you. And I'm sorry for everything that I've ever done. And she said, Micah, just hold on. Have faith. And immediately the phone went out because it was wet. And um, I remember the water rolls over my nose. And I could see the water at the bottom of my eyelids. Jesus. And I said, okay, God. Just accept me in your arms. And he said, nope, that's not it. I remember I saw a crack in the window, and all six foot six of me uh, drove through the, uh, went through the window of my SUV. I was able to get out. And um, I'm an optimistic person. I looked at the car sink, and I'm just swimming in the canal. And I looked down, and I, not being too graphic, I could see my, my heels, back of my legs were floating on top of the water, floating. Jesus. And uh, still being optimistic, 
I said, well, maybe they're just out of socket. They'll pop them back in until I touch my thigh. And not being too graphic, it sounded like a empty glass of ice and you're putting water in it. It Jesus. had a crackling noise just like that. Jesus. And I knew something was wrong then. And I remember them rushing me to the hospital um, in the ambulance. And then I fainted. And when I woke up, the doctor said, I'm sorry, Mr. Lee, but we're going to have to rush you into surgery and going to have to amputate your legs. Mm. And um, that was the hardest thing for me. I remember waking up and I immediately pulled the sheet back and I saw my legs were still attached. And the doctor came in and said, well, we were able to save your legs, Thank you, news, Jesus. but you'll, you'll never be able to walk again. That was the hardest time in my life yes. because I know what God promised me as a child, right. like the things that I would be doing. I had dreams and visions about what I'm doing now, mm -hmm. even. And all I could ever see was me playing sports or, or being an entertainer and singing and, and doing all kinds of stuff. And I said, I can't do any of that from a wheelchair. And if you imagine being the, the, the big man on campus, the, the popular guy in school, and all of a sudden you're now wheelchair bound and people are treating you like, you know, you're handicapped. Right. Hardest thing in the world. I was in that wheelchair for over a year. Um, I, it, it's, it's something. It's something. I remember even um, I had some more issues. When I was in the hospital, I had uh, uh, four blood clots. I had to have mm. eight blood transfusions. Jesus. Um, it was a lot happening. I had a temperature of 104, and it was pretty bleak. And I remember, and this is something, like the daytimes were okay, but nighttimes in that room alone yes. were, and you know, a lot of us uh, African-American men hate to ever admit that we're emotional or yes. sad mm -hmm. or yes. depressed yes. Mm -hmm. or any of these things. And I'm thinking that my life was just over. And I remember this, and I remember the first time I met her, I told her, a C.C. Winans was on television, and she said, on TVN, and she said, I don't know who this is for. But there's a young man out there who's been in an accident, and I want him to know mm. that he's concerned about you. Jesus. She pointed to the camera, and oh my God. the thing. I remember, you know how you know God, yes. and you profess to know God, you've been in church all your life, yes. you know who he is, but it's different when you have an encounter with mm -hmm. him hey. versus just knowing who he is. Yes. And I remember I looked at the air vents, and I saw, literally saw with my own eyes, and I'm, 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 I'm a person who asks a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm extremely analytical yes. and you know i ask bible questions go to sunday school and ask these questions and i said how come in the church we don't have uh, miracles and experiences with him like they used to you yes. know and um i always hear miracles and things are still happening but it's different when you see it mm -hmm. i remember looking up at the air vent and i saw my room fill up with a cloud of smoke and all six foot six 300 pounds of me i felt the lord come in and pick me up like a newborn baby Jesus. that's crying mm. and rocked me and cradled me. Yes. And I said, am I just, am I just hallucinating because of the loss of blood? And I said, wow. In that moment, I said, God, with all these billions of people out here, you had time to come see about little old me. Yes. Mm. And from that moment on, I began to stabilize. Everything started to go back to normal and my healing started to take place. So long story short, I was in this wheelchair for a year, mm -hmm. and I remember being at home, and my mom said, Micah, you can't die in here. You have to live. Yes. And I said, I don't want anybody to see me like this. I'm not the person I used to be. And she says, you just got to get out and start. So I remember, she's like, you're going to church with me. And I got to church, and they wheeled me in the back, and I said, I, I don't want to you know, go up front and people to see me right. like this. And they said, well, here's Brother Lee. He's here. Um, I, at the time, before the accident, I was the leader of the church's praise team. And I remember uh, them saying, here's Brother Lee, and uh, we would love to have him uh, come up and sing. And wow. I was so embarrassed. Right. I was so embarrassed. And they, but they wheeled me up, and I remember I started singing. First time I sang in over a year. And literally, I looked outside, and it's like I had an out-of-body experience because I could see. It seemed like the sun was shining extra bright. All the flowers were all over the trees in bright colors. Wow. I see the hummingbird. I say, wow, God, your world is beautiful. Maybe I do have a life to live. Instantaneously, I heard the Lord whisper in my ear, today's the day. Wow. 
And you know what uh, Shirley Caesar saying? It's just like fire shot up in your bones. Yeah. Uh-huh. I literally felt instantaneously my legs up, mm. heated up. And I call this my Benny Hinn moment. My legs straightened up. They gained strength, and I took off running. Oh, uh, Jesus. Off running. You probably tore that church Throughout upside church, down. The whole, the whole church was in an uproar. And wow. I just... And I forgot what I was singing. I'm just like, I can walk, I can walk. I mean, just screaming. And I said, miracles still do happen. And what that let me know mm. is that God, number one, he's real. Yes. And he's a promise keeper. Yes. Because he promised me uh, that I would still be doing what I'm doing. But he let me know at that moment. Um, they awarded me at the Stellars two years ago as the hardest working man in gospel music. Mm-hmm. And... I, I, I push, I fight so hard, but what gave me that drive is because I now understand that life is but, but a fleeting moment. Yes, sir. If you're going to do something, you get up right now, and you're doing, and you do it. I'm, I'm, I'm ah. talking to your listeners today yes. that whatever it is that you desire to be and to do, you get up and you do it because tomorrow is not promised to you. It's not promised to you. You get up and do what you have to do and be the best that you can be. You know, and um, so so that pushed me to where I am now. And it seems like God placed a special anointing on my life, not just on my voice at that point, Mm -hmm. but my writing skills like quadrupled. Um, It seems like my voice uh, even changed and it just set me towards the path of being um, who I am now. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to jump. I'm going to jump in on this one. I I got some questions for you, my friend. Uh, Number number one. Uh, this is a powerful testimony. A powerful testimony. Have, have you been able to share this on like TBN or any of the major networks? I have done more than that. It's so funny how you're, you're, uh, what I'm discovering as an artist a lot of times because so many people can sing yes. that your story is what a lot of people are interested in. That's your story sales. makes room for you. Mm-hmm. And I think God didn't allow me to go through that just because I have um, done a lot on Sirius XM. I was invited by um, Sway in the Morning and Heather B. Mm-hmm. on Sirius XM. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, like, I can't believe that I'm here, a gospel artist on a hip hop R and B network, you mm-hmm. know, but God. and uh, filming that live. And it's like, see, when I first met them, it's so funny that they're like, God called, you. God told me to have you. Mm-hmm. God told me to have you on, and opened me up to thousands and thousands of followers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, who just needed what I had and telling my story and hearing their stories and them crying with me and how I blessed their life and wow. how they had to pull over. And I've, mm-hmm. I've done a lot of things with, uh, based upon this. And it just showed me mm-hmm. my life is that kind of story. It mm-hmm. has showed me, um, for me, God is so many things to many people, but throughout my life, he's consistently showing me that, you know, he's a promise keeper. Yes. And yeah. that, he will never forget you. Mm-hmm. I remember this is the, and so that's why I try to encourage people with that. I remember being 12 years old and I had the Brandy album, uh, Never Say Never in my hand. And I had the um, Whitney Houston album with the, it's not right, but it's okay. Mm-hmm. And I remember having an out of body experience, looking at the two albums saying one day I'm going to work with Dark Child. 20 years later, here it is. I have the opportunity to record my project with Dark Child. 20 years later. Wow, yeah. but God, but God, like you As said. A child, mm-hmm. it, but God has this, this set plan, like, for what your story is. Here it is, all this time later, um, I just knew that I would be doing what I was doing, yes. doing now, You're recording this project. You know, I can't give the secret as, as to who who's featuring on my album. Right. But God, wait, 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 my you, favorite singer in yeah, the world. Yeah, yes, you can. You could break it here, right <laughs> on God Radio. It could be breaking news, my man. Favorite. Fred Hammond, you work with Fred Hammond though. In the world. The, I have worked with Uncle Freddie. Uh, yes. Uncle Fred. You uh, mean, and I've got a lot of Uncle Freddie. Yes. You mean but Stevie Fred, Wonder's on? I, I have. I've been on tour with them. Yes. You mean Stevie Wonder's on your album, man? No, nah, that would be that would be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let me ask you: I, I, one of my favorite singers in the world is, is going to be featured on my album. I'm like, God, I, I was so shocked. One of the biggest artists in the world yeah. featuring on my record. But and that's I how God works. Even, and so that's how He works. But He showed me that in 2001. So is that something? So let me ask you this question. Uh, uh, first of all, there's two questions I want to ask you. Number one. Um, Who's your favorite singer? And 
And what position? Well, that's give it away. <laughs> and what <laughs> what position did you play when you played football? So I played defensive end and tackle. I was fast. I was okay. I could run the forty in like a four six. A big old bag big old run big the 40 dude. Like wow, six. that's fast. So so and one I, of the things I, I, I was fast. That that I you know in my spirit I felt like he was offense and defense and 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 yeah. the God is giving you that offense defense approach now the the look that you have the look that you have and the energy that you have is not just reaching the church but it's actually reaching the world and when um, mm-hmm. black men especially but men in general mm-hmm. when they see this six six big brother loving and worshiping God the way you are. It begins to make Christianity attractive and acceptable for men to be real men. Mm-hmm. And so I want to applaud you, applaud you on that. And uh, just for the record, your favorite singer is who? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, let, okay let, now let me ask you. I'm, I'm going to simply say, I'm going to simply say that when it comes to that part about my, um, with the look and everything, I have friends. And, I, you know, when you're a ball player and you're hanging out, you get yep. friends with everybody. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of my friends, their their common statement was, I, I can't, I don't go to church like you because I don't have nothing to wear. The last time I went and they was looking at me yep. crazy because I don't have the three-piece suit yep. like you have. Yep. Uh-huh. I was like, what? Yep. When did this become the focus? Especially when we say come as you are, right. we really don't mean that. Because yeah. when the homeless man comes into church, we're looking at them sideways. You yeah. know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. When the person who does not look like us, comes in the church. I mm-hmm. always said, what would you do if the if the uh the transsexual came in the church and said, I want to be saved? What are you, what are you gonna do? Right. You got what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Are you gonna turn this right. person away? Right. No. Mm-hmm. We have to learn to love people in the space that they are. Yes, you know, and, and God will do the, the rest. They are and let, mm-hmm. and let God do the rest. He said, let him do the rest. Mm-hmm. So he, for, for me, when it comes to my look mm-hmm. and everything, I don't tr- I've never tried to be anything other than who I am. Right. I think that's the biggest mistake a lot of us do. Mm-hmm. I can do all the riffs and runs like everybody else. Right. And then I had to realize, like, Micah, you're not a Clark sister. You're right. not done with Clark. Right. You're not Marvin Sapp. Your name is Micah right. Lee. The best, the best Micah Lee. That. The best Micah and Lee. The best Micah Lee there is. Can't nobody do Micah better than Micah. There you go. And I, the minute that I understood that, that's when God put his hand on my music. And all of a sudden, four top sins later, we hear. See? Now, yes. I, now I have a question. If you could open up for any artist, dead or alive, and and this is not gonna make you tell on who you like, tell but, it, tell but if it. you can, if you could open up for any artist, let's add an S to it. Who would it be? If you could put this concert together yourself, this could be Michael Lee featuring. It could be dead or alive. Who would they be? So, if some of these people are you be so are curveballs, I would open for. Ella Fitzgerald, yes. my absolute, absolute, just to be in the presence of of such a creative. I think she never even reached the pinnacle just because of the time frame of living, of who she was. The, the creative mind of who she was vocally is above and beyond. Um, I love the classics, of course. Anything to do with Michael Jackson and and. And even to just be in their presence of opening for them right. and what that would mean mm-hmm. to be in those places. See, I'm more than just a singer. I'm, I'm focused on the business aspect of what a thing is. Right. And I understand that perception of, of anything is anything. So to have that sort of cosign yep. would be huge for me. Um, huge for me. Um, so many people that I love, um, so many artists. I can't even, you know, it's, like where do you begin? I knew it's gonna be I, I tough. I still would lose my mind opening for Anita Baker. Yeah, oh, oh my Jesus. goodness, I would be, I would be in a whole nother realm. Um, can you notice that my my musical box is way bigger than just gospel? And don't get me wrong, right. oh, I love oh, my legends. Oh, without a doubt, that too. I love my legends in that too. I'm just saying, musically, these people um, just were so creative and and they were big upon uh, and just doing what they do. They were international. They were international. They were crossover. Yeah. Now, now, don't forget to add they your favorite crossover. singer. I, I, Who is that? I, I, she changed my life. No. I would say that. So, oh, okay. <laughs> she. All right. Okay, we, we're see, almost there. You, you know what? Uh, you know who you remind me yeah. of when I hear you? Who? Will Downing. 
Oh gosh, I've heard that. The texture. I've been called the gospel Luther. Yep. I've been gospel Teddy P. I've been yep. all of those things. All and those are so tenor, funny. are tenor, baritone, rich tone singers. Yep. I, I've got like, voices been compared to BB Uncle BB BB yep. Wyden. It's and all in that. I remember mix. having a conversation with him. Uh, a conversation with him. He was like, "All right, Mike, I heard you sing my song, Heaven. You can't sing that no more. You can't do it better." Than me. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so, like that. Yeah. So, 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 let me ask you this question, because uh, people, yeah. people are uh, asking these questions. Um, where are you at in your life? Married, children, and where, where are you at in your life? So I am. Uh, are we gonna roll. With, we're gonna roll with unmarried. <laughs> and one uh, one child. So we're going to roll with unmarried. Eventually, it will happen, I assume. Um, I, I, I'm i I'm such a person, the best way to say it is like... Um, yo, 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 to to put this the wait, right but watch this. Yo, your Instagram is going to go up 10,000 people now. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> okay, I believe it. I believe it. Um, I think... And, and my inbox is always blown up. I, but I am the person who always has thought um, towards the future, um, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to uh, being a great, a great provider, you know, like as a husband, right, right. Um, like to make sure I'm so super established, mm-hmm. That's wisdom. you know, that I can be that provider, That's you wisdom. know, so I always feel like a lot of us put the cart before the horse, Yes, mm-hmm. you know, and um, you just should be able to line up certain things. And I think a lot of people, once you have all of these things lined up, um, you know, you want to be a be a great parent, be right. a great, you know, and do all of these things instead of on the job training. Right. Mm-hmm. That's not what I want to do. Right. You know what I right. mean? Right. I don't want to do that. I want to be able to have everything and be a hundred percent complete and whole, Micah. Right. You know, um, instead of trying to figure it out, and that's why you see so much. Um, this is real talk here. This is not just gospel talk. This is this is real life stuff. Right. You know. Right. Like, you see so many people trying to figure out who they are and what they want to do, why they're doing it. Right. You know, in the middle of doing it, and sometimes that thing doesn't work out how they plan on it being because they they didn't take the time to know who they were completely. Right. Amen. And Amen. you and you know? can't you can't give to and anybody so, unless you're complete. Unless you're complete, mm-hmm. a marriage of any kind should be uh, right. not just. 50-50 coming together to make one. No, you should be 100 and 100. Preach. And let's put this thing together. Right. Yes, let's yes. do this. Now, that, that's, that's really, truthfully, I got a curveball for you. Let mm-hmm. people know what else you do besides gospel. Um, let, let them know about the, about the um, you know what I'm talking about, the stuff you sell? <laughs> the stuff you sell. That is so funny. Uh-oh. Yeah. I, I'm just a businessman. He's a businessman, listen, y'all. Have have- Sonia and all y'all, listen to this, because I'm going to support him in this aspect. Tell him about this. Well, poor, bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Especially them shoes. <laughs> especially especially them, uh, them high tops. Oh, that is so funny. Listen, I am just a businessman who believes in multiple streams of income. That's in the Bible. Uh, if people will see me, people will see me on these stages, doing all of that, but they don't know that I will book a Sunday morning at one church uh, for, in California and fly home to go to work on Monday morning. I definitely will do that. So I have a, um, a 9 to 5 job still. Yes. Um, you know, the management for a, a warranty company. I've been doing that for years. Mm-hmm. And I also, um, you know, if anybody wants to support that, I have a, uh, a separate business that is doing, it's amazing how God, has done that thing. Yes, uh, sir. I see I it. Have a business. Yeah, where I have a direct partnership um, with Louis Vuitton. So I have access to pretty much any and everything. With Louis Vuitton. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Oh, he, he the star you show. Know, anybody Louis Vuitton, y'all. Sonia, he gets discounted. So Louis Vuitton. Okay, if, okay. Any, if anybody desires... Uh, any Louis Vuitton item? I love any, Louis Vuitton, y'all. So if y'all want gifts for me for February, <laughs> it's that's the any thing. bag, backpack, shoes, whatever you y'all want. You got some bad I stuff. have access to it at, I mean, at greatly discounted prices. I mean, greatly, literally, 
literally half and under. So well, if you ever desire any luxury items for yes. your family, your mother, your, your wife, your, or, anything your ra- you or your radio personality that, that encourages you every your, morning. Your radio personality. Well, 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 I, well, I definitely am. They call me the plug. Well, well, hold, 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 hold on, uh, 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 bro, bro, Brother Lee. Brother, brother Lee, God uh, bless yeah, you. Right. Now, uh, tell everybody where you live at because I want to get to a so – where, where do you live now? So I'm all the way on the East Coast. I live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Okay, so he's in Florida. Yeah. Now, there, there, a spirit just gave me this, that you need a West Coast partner in your Louis Vuitton business. Well, he's been talking and, to him. And, oh, and, oh, and, oh, and um, oh. Robert Earl Dean and I, you know, we could be your subsidiary yes, on sir. the West Coast, and we're to spread the love, spread the love. Oh, listen, listen. <laughs> do, do, do a background check, bro, oh, Brother Lee. Do a background check. People tell you. We are we, Mister Go Tell on the Mountains over here. Yeah, we we we, we could give uh, we could give you a, a, another thirty percent increase on your on your standard income <laughs> based on uh, the sales rates that we would do right here. You know, have your people call yeah. our people, it, and we gonna make this happen. Absolutely, because right. this <laughs> station this station is is, is is heard in over twenty one countries now. Uh, we will make it happen. I'm definitely. They call me the plug in the, in the hey. industry. You would be surprised, man. My son of celebrity clients, everybody you can think of mm-hmm. has ran my way. And I'm just so shocked by that. It's so funny when I'm talking to these uh, mega superstars, like these R&B stars who mm-hmm. call me, and they they all want great deals and hookups, too. Of I'm course like, well, they do. <laughs> and and, 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 and Louis so speaks for itself. Louis speaks for itself. Uh, yes, yes. Well, and I try to be so professional yeah. and, and freaking out at the same time. Without a doubt. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's like, Beyonce, it's okay. I got a special one for you. Don't nobody got this one yet. But you, right. Nobody, that's for you, Beyonce. Right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> yes. And on the inside, I'm screaming. Yes. But see, that's what God will, God will put you in places, and I don't care what nobody say, the light has to shine in darkness. And God mm-hmm. will be, he'll use his sovereignty to place you in those positions. And church folk won't understand, but we have to know that God called us. You selling product and stuff, that's another way to minister to people, people that may not go to a church. Absolutely. And, and so Absolutely. It, and it's so funny. It, it's so funny just in brief how that mm-hmm. even that whole thing came around. Mm-hmm. It was a moment where, you know, I had to, the label wanted my project and wanted wants me to do it right now Mm -hmm. and it's so funny how i was like wait a minute well micah how can you and how god placed on my heart say well you have this i've given you these Mm -hmm. these um connections Mm -hmm. why don't you use it come on (laughs) i hear that all the time so so let me ask you i'm I'm gonna ask you this question because um uh you are so well spoken you're so uh knowledgeable um i want to take it back to what was the ingredient? Because you you said you called your mom and told her that you loved mm-hmm. her. Um, tell me the impact that your mom or your family as a whole had on you in your upbringing, because there had to be some introduction somewhere. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. So let's talk. Let's talk a little oh, bit about that. It's been it, it's been everything. So I could start back. I'm going to talk about my mother, my father, and my grandmother. Okay. And my godmother. They, they, these people. I'm so thankful. It makes me tear up for having core people who just really, really, really considered me. Uh, my grandmother saw something special in me as a child, and it's so funny. We had a group. It was my cousin, my sister, my older sister, and myself. And it's so funny. They led all the songs. I was the background singer. <laughs> singing wasn't my thing. I right. wanted to play sports. Now, the, the ironic part is if you ask either one of them to sing my sister or my cousin now, you will be uh, say who you'll be sounding like Maddie Moss. Say, who you singing to, cat? Right. Because they, uh, <laughs> they didn't work so it. Because they didn't work it. They didn't work that right. thing. Right. But my grandmother saw something in me, and I remember she said, Micah, um, like now I can sing, I can lie to him like no other. All this modern stuff I do is cool, and I can stand flat foot and lie to him like it's nothing. I remember she taught me every song in the book, and she said, uh, Micah, you will always have a song to sing. You will always have one. Yes. And I've I taken that thing to heart. Right. Um, like she taught me, and she, she pushed me out there. I remember going to her church, um, family and friends, and she said, as soon as I walked through the door, they were like, oh, there's Mother Lee's grandson, Micah, in his own way. He's next on program. 
And I remember <laughs> my parents, this tells you how long ago this was, they had a cassette tape that Uh-oh. we used to drive up and down the highway flipping that tape over yes, and over. Sir. And they had this old song called Life is a Ball Game. Mm. That song was my favorite song. Life is a ball game being played each day. Old song. Yeah. And I remember that I got up there and, you you know, as a child, I'm just singing, and you know how you try Life to do bombing. your best. And you know when you're bombing. Right. You know when you're bombing, right. when everybody looking at you like, that's all right. Right. Sing it, baby, sing right. it. Right. And my grandmother, Help him, Jesus. I, I folded her arms and, and turned it away. And after service, you know how most grandmothers are like, oh, baby, that was so wonderful. Right. You know, you keep going at it. My grandmother was like, boy, don't you ever make me shame like that again. Oh, she Lord. didn't say us shame. She said shame right. with a head down. Right. And that thing cut me like a knife, but it's just what I needed. Because now, when I get nervous in front of crowds, a yep. thousand, yep. singing in front of 10,000 people, yeah. the first thing pops is Big Mama in my head saying, now, don't you make me shame. So I'm like, let's do this. Yes, you know? that's good. That's good. Uh, so it taught me. Um, and it also, um, my, my, my father, and it's so funny as a child, you know, my dad always had these slogans and things that he would say that I used to be like, oh, dad, here we go, here we go again. again. But I always had a dad who told me, Micah, nobody remembers second place. Wow. If you're going to do anything in life, mm-hmm. you'll be the best at it. Right. That's how he taught me. That's the dr- why I have this certain drive that when the door is closed, I'm going through the window. You can't take it from me, you know. Um you know, that's why I was the highest charting independent gospel music for like three years straight at the time. You know what I mean? Right, like you right. can't take what my position is right. because I'm going to work for it and earn it. Yes, so you sir. can't deny me. Right. And um, I got that kind of drive from my dad. It was like, if you're going to do something, you're not going to quit. Right. You're going to see that thing all the way through. That was parenting. And that is just truthfully mm-hmm. what he's done. Um, and so now I just honor him for that. Um, in everything that I could do because he put this certain thing where other people take the the difference between, it's an old saying that says 99% of people are unsuccessful and 1% of people are successful. And the difference between that 99% and that 1% that are is that that 1% is willing to do the things that the 99 are not. I tell my athletes that, man. Does that make sense? Yeah, I tell my athletes that. that Yes. Yes. And so... So for me, I've always, whereas the average person is like, I done went to work, I done worked my eight-hour day, my eight-hour shift, and I'm tired, I'm paying my bills, yeah. I'm go home. I was always that person that says, I want this so bad, let me work my eight hours. If I got to hop in my uh, Beamer and go drive Uber, I'm going to do that. With all of this, this stuff I got takes. going on, there were days that I did 18-hour shifts because I knew I needed a certain capital to take care of what I need to have done. See there? Yeah. Man, you Fancy. preaching. You better and preach, Pastor Lee. Singing across the country. Preaching. Singing with Fred Hammett, taking, taking tours and doing all of this stuff. And Micah would work 16, 18-hour days every single day. Wow. Work these hours. And then after working 16 hours, we'll go work out a little bit, sleep for two, three, four hours just to get back up and do it all, all over, over again. again because because I believed in me first. Yes. I compare this, and I, and I want people to hear this. I compare this to, remember that show that's out there, Shark Tank? Yes, yep. sir. Um, well, the, the premise of Shark Tank is for people to come with these great business models and that these sharks who are business moguls, can, if they like what you're doing, they're going to um, take it to the next level for right. you. Come on, man. Um, by making an investment in you. Yeah. Well, you you can't just come to them with an idea no. mm-hmm. and say, this is what, you know, I want to mm-hmm. do. And I'm telling you, it's going to be the next big thing. Mm-hmm. So you have to put together a business a plan, game plan. Yeah. create the item, have have case studies where you have worked the work yes. and show a projected thing of what it's going to be. I use that same thing with the music business and everything. you got so many people who are talented, and they think, oh, well, one day Clive Davis is going to hear me humming. Man, you teach it. You come to Hollywood right now. No, you got to do a certain amount of work. And position sure yourself. Yes. In position. Come on. To have and achieve what you want. That's what you do. So that's always yes. been my thing. Yes. I'm, I'm, all, I'm ready at, at all times. 
I'm ready well, for that call oh, because oh, I always make sure that I'm in position. Well, see, see so now, man, so this, 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 we should have had him on oh, Industry, Industry Monday, Monday and Independent Friday. Yes, man, you get man. You, so, so let me let me run this down to everybody, and then I want you to say that your piece on your mom. Number one. He don't just have one job. Multiple. He needs an income. Jesus. Number two, he's not just waiting for everybody at the church to give him a booking fee. He has created a oh, multiple string oh. of income. He's not a one-trick pony where he only can sing the upbeat or the modern song. He could take you all the way back home and flat foot sing. Yes. Number two, he, he did not try to be anybody but his best self, and his best self was in competition with his best self. Come on. And he said when it came down to dressing— he couldn't wear everything else, so he found what worked for him. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Artists, listen to this. People, listen to this. Come on. This is a man that has shown himself successful as an independent on, artist, but is known throughout the world Come on. and has impact because he believed enough in himself he work that in, he would man. not stop working until he began to reach his goal. And right now, after he does his deal with it me works. and Robert Earl Dean, yes. he gonna, we're going to expand him some more, and we're going to do four more deals yeah. <laughs> before the day is over. Y'all see how it works right here on yes. GLP Radio. Now, talk now tell, about, us, tell, tell us about to, your mama. Yes, uh, tell yes. us about your mama. You know, I have a, a mother who is just, you know, my mom, and, and she's just my truly my biggest supporter that no matter what, um, it's something to have that. Yes. I, I, I think when you see people who don't honor their parents and honor their mother, I think I would give my mother my, my last everything. Mm -hmm. Um, because she's, I, I, I grew up with parents who just, who just were there, um, and that they support. And I, I thank them now for allowing me to get on their nerve at 12 midnight where they're trying to sleep. You know, to let me scream and holler and sing it in my room yes, for myself. Sir. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Having to tell me to hush, but they always just support it, whatever it is. And I hope that I, of course, am making them proud. And my mother loves it because uh, she would call me for anything, whatever she wants. She called me the other day. Most isn't that something? Most people say, "Give me, give me, give me fifty dollars. Give me a hundred. My mom said, "I want this new dining room table. It's only three thousand. Just give me that." I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> you told her to ask. Yeah, yeah. You told her to ask for what she uh, wants. My, my favorite thing is not not the big ass. Is when you, you work it hard, ba baby. Um, on your way home, stop by Popeyes and get me a a, a six piece and bring it all. But but, Mama, can't we just? No, I want you to bring it to me. You know, I want you to do it. Yeah. Right. 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 I want you to do it. A, that when you get that, and I love it, and I just love honoring them. I was able to um, get my parents. Um, it's so funny how God just ends complete relationships. Um, I remember um, the, the car that I got into an accident in was my parents' new car. Oh, Lord. Um, and no, I, I, and I, that thing used to eat me alive because they never said anything. Wow. They never made me feel any kind of way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in working how I've worked and my career growing, I was able to, uh, about two years ago, at Christmas, um, if you find it on Facebook, it's a tearjerker. I think it, at least 30,000 people looked at it at least. I um, was able to bless them, um, tell them I'm sorry for the accident and bring the whole thing full circle mm -hmm. and bless them with a new car. Um, Wow. Brand new car. Amen. I, to, I gave them the money for a brand new car. I Look mean, tear jerker. Look I didn't buy it because my mom is, is my mom is one of those ones who who you know let her pick her own. Right. <laughs> but ba baby, that I ain't the color I wanted. Right. right. Blue used to be yeah. my color. Now now it's jet black. <laughs> but, but I think it's oh, great. The moment look, the moment would have been ruined if she would have said, "Well, you could have got the red." Right. Right. <laughs> right. 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 You know your people. You know your people. Right. But you know. But thank I, God for you were able the, to do I, that. When, yeah. What he mentioned to me, um, and this is so funny about, um, and I want to share this because I, I always like to share this. My motto. I remember uh, a few years ago, and I got to give much respect to her, uh, Gina Miller, the VP at E1. She said a thing to me that has changed the trajectory of what I do. She says, Micah. Your food gets cold when you're focusing on what's on someone else's plate. <laughs> and That's when she said that thing to me, it hit me like a ton of bricks because here I am 
such an analytical person, mm -hmm. always looking at the charts and what yep. can I do? Yep. How come this person is getting the opportunity that I didn't that I didn't get? And you don't know these people's story. Come on, and you ever think you you can kind of compare this to a racetrack? You ever seen some sprinters that are running? Yes, and sir. You can't run your full potential always looking back to see where the next runner you is. You better not look That's back. Not you better focus on the finish line. You better not look back. Yes, yes, you need bro. To get to that finish line. Yes. All that looking back, you're slowing yourself it's, down. You're slowing yourself and down. So that, I, I did that for years, Man. always. You know, well, I've done more than this person. How come this person has this? Man. So you, you focus on what God has given you. Whether he's giving you this little one gift and talent, you work your work. You work that thing to the best of your ability. Man, you blessing me. God bless you God. blessing me, Michael. God will bless it. But I'm you blessing me. You, Come on, man. You blessing uh, me. So, so yeah. bro brother Micah, I, I just want to let yeah. you know, Robert Earl Dean is a is a, a, a world renowned track coach, man, and a Hall of talk, Famer. But you talking to me? So, so he 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 loving it. He he's like you just doing telling man. everything he's he telling us. Yeah. But but your testimony is similar to mine in almost everything that you're saying. Yeah. And so let me oh, ask wow. this. So we we honored mom, we honored dad, um, we honored grandma. You said that you had godmother. I want to I want to complete the yeah. story because. Actually, I yeah. want to share this interview with some people over at TBN and some other places because I really believe that this is a story that needs to go all the way to the morning news so that people can really hear what God has he's done. He's an overcomer, yes. And, and what he's doing for you. Yeah. And so well, uh, complete well, the story. Godmother. Yeah, so my godmother. So after my two grandmothers passed away, um, my godmother, I remember she, she said, she says, baby, I'm your, I'm your grandmother now. And this is about 20 years ago. She she um, has always just been there for me. And my parents couldn't even get mad at me. She wouldn't let that happen. And no matter what I needed, she made sure um, that I had it. She's like, baby, you need a, you can't be going out there any kind of way. You need a new suit. Let me make sure you have it. Yes. You know, just, just, just a person who loves you. Sometimes some, some situations go deeper than blood, you know, who loved you, and I don't want to get too emotional because she passed away. It, it, this month makes it a year. Mm -hmm. wow. And uh, it's been pretty difficult because it's something how an 80-year-old woman can be my best friend. Wow. Um, people who genuinely love you. And uh 85-year-old woman, and she just was so amazing and such a supporter of me. And when I would sing, she would just look with such pride. And uh, I remember this is been about um, a month ago now, I had another vision, um, and I was singing at the Stellars, and I was singing my song, Don't Break, and I remember looking in the audience, and in the front row was my godmother and my two grandmothers, mm. clapping their hands and looking at me with such pride. Wow. They had such pride in their eyes, and I could see them lipping like, sang, boy. And it just let me know that, you know, they may be gone, but they still with still me. Still here, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. they still with me. Yes. And, you know, they're proud of me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that pushes me all the more just to keep going and just to be the best me that I can be. So I don't stop. I keep moving. You know, I take all those things. I believe God places people in, certain people in our lives yes. strategically. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they were all there to assist in making me the man that I am. Man, we, we appreciate you. This interview has been, I told you it was well, going to be well, more than well, just an interview. Man, man. okay, first of all, let me just say this. Uh, Michael Lee, Michael Lee, Michael Lee, Michael Lee. Brother, my, my, okay, internet is blowing up. My phone is blowing up. Everybody is saying, say his name again, Michael Lee, Michael Lee. Brother, you have blessed the people we want to make sure this blessing continues on we want lord they calling in now trying to get in on this uh how can they follow you how yeah. can you how, how can, can they follow you follow how can you? they tap in with you follow me so so of course everybody please keep up with me on social media um you can find me on instagram and it's at micah lee music um excuse me at mike scratch that at micah's music m-i-c-a-h-s music that's at Micah's with an S, M-I-C-A-H-S music. My Instagram is lit, people. Listen, that's where the magic happens. 
We have fun on my Instagram. You can see where I'm going next. He asked me answers. You can see me working and he responds. Yes. Where I'm, and I respond. So listen, you can always touch base with me there on Facebook. Find the handsome man with the well-groomed beard and white teeth. Just Micah Lee, M-I-C-A-H, last name Lee. Um, find me there. And listen, go out and um, support my music. I have my single, Don't Break, was the number one song for 17 weeks as yes. an independent. Yes. <laughs> it can happen. Yes. Um, you know, produced by Dark Child, number one for 17 weeks. Michael yes. Lee, who even song on top of Kirk Franklin, It Can Happen. Yes. Um, it also, uh, is, so it's available right now, Don't Break, on all uh, uh, musical platforms. I also have um, other great music that you definitely want to check out. Got and videos, too. Me. Videos too on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now how great videos, all kinds of stuff. Now, how they get in touch with you, like for Louis Vuitton stuff? Just Instagram you and ask so about listen, it. And anybody, if you serious in inquiries only. Louis Vuitton products. Thank you for saying it because I try to make it clear. Don't tell me. Don't hit me up with your wish list. I don't need any of that. Right. If you're interested in it, I can literally get everything for either fifty percent. Or even under fifty percent right. for a lot of items. So come uh, ready you know, to come ready to work. Uh, okay, come okay. ready. And it's authentic items. So yes, sir. You can either DM me on Instagram and yes. again my page is Micah's Music M I C A H S Music or on Facebook. Just look for Micah Lee. Okay, and, uh, hit me up. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a jump. I'm going to jump in and say this. So for those of y'all Louis fans and everything like that, please go to the Louis store and get the prices ahead of time. So Thank you'll you. know you know Thank what ballpark you need to be in. Don't call him and, and done got a $3,000 bag and want it for $300. If it's 3000 online, that means it's got to be 1500 <laughs> or, or a little like right that, yeah. there. Play, so, somewhere yeah. in that, somewhere yeah. in that space. Right. Yeah. Either be 15 sometimes a little under. Yeah. It may be 12 1300 but you may want to, you know. Do your research. You know, I'm, and I'm always able <laughs> to do certain deals. So the easiest way to do it, and I tell people this all the time, go to the LouisVuitton.com website, mm -hmm. screenshot your bag, the name of the bag, and the price so you yeah. can have clarity. And when you're sending it to me, don't send me your wish list. Send me, say, hey, how much can you do this in particular bag right. for? And I'll give you your price point or yeah. I'll write then and there. And, right. And, and, and tell me that's the best way to do it. Tell me you heard it on GOD Radio 1 if you some of our and, listeners and viewers. And see, I'm already in trouble because I know my wife, who is our program director, is tuning in. And she found your music long before a lot of people found your mm -hmm. music and started playing it. Mm -hmm. And um, But I, I see right now, you know, I think I just got a text saying, okay, babe, I'm on the site right now. So you done started, <laughs> you done started <laughs> something, for, uh, yeah. Brother Lee. If, if her time, you get her what she wants and for the holidays is coming up. <laughs> So y'all just, you know what to do. Get in contact with me. Tell her to get right. what she, screenshot what she needs and send it right to me. And right. we'll get it done <laughs> for you right away. Now Amen. set us up with your your song. So listen, um, here's my single. It's called Don't Break. This song is my testimony. And truthfully, it's a testimony to the season that we're in. Um, a lot of people need that sort of encouragement. Just the song simply says, don't break, don't break. before you break through. Yeah. Um, I, there was a meme that came out a long time ago, which was the actual premise of this song, where was a man digging a tunnel underground. Mm -hmm. and he was digging, digging, and digging. And soon as he gave up and walked away discouraged, the picture expanded and said if he hit one more time, he would have been in a room full of diamonds. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you today, what if all it takes is one more try, huh. one more step, one more day, one more go, and you're going to have all of your dreams and desires, everything you've been waiting on. So I encourage you today to don't break before you break through. Yes, it's Michael Lee. Yes. Michael Lee, right here on GOD Radio 1.com. <laughs>